Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Borzy, and what if I told you that there is a mouse worse than the Booga Mouse, and it was made by Jeff Bezos? You probably would not believe me, but here we are, and this is going to be a review of the Amazon Basics mouse, which is definitely a contender for the worst mouse I've ever used. Um, and I feel like that videos like these are a great argument against theism, because there is no way that a god would allow mice like these to exist. Um, but getting right into the review i want to first talk about something positive um the main clicks these are some of the like best tensioned buttons i've ever seen and this is a ten dollar mouse um there's like no play no pre-travel well there is a bit of side play um but this is like less than i have on my g pro super light um and there's like barely any travel issues and they legitimately feel like huano um blue shell white dots and the clicks on this mouse feel better than a lot of mice with 20Ms, and the quality of them is just so impressive. Um, but that is genuinely the only good thing I can say about this mouse. Unfortunately, it does not feature side buttons, so Fortnite gamers, this will not be an option for you. Um, if you play Fortnite, the Booga mouse will still be the go-to mouse. Um, also, it doesn't feature any RGB, but the laser sensor is very bright, so I feel like that sort of makes up for it. Um, the sensor position is a bit to the right. I feel like that helps a bit with aiming. Uh, I don't really know. It's pretty cool. It looks like a key from the side. Uh, these mouse feet, they're so, so extremely thin. I genuinely can't even tell uh, if it's like my mouse feet or just the bottom of my mouse rubbing against the pad. This is the uh, Odin Infinity, and on heavily textured pads like this, um, there's just so much friction. It's legitimately unplayable, um, but when I was using the Sky Pad, it was just really loud. Actually, I'm going to go get my Sky Pad, and now I'm just going to do a sound test. <laughs> And another interesting quirk about this mouse is that the DPI feels vastly different on every single mouse pad I use. And this is sort of like how Razer lets you like customize the LOD. They definitely took some inspiration from Amazon Basics. Um, it's a really cool feature. Depending on what mouse pad you're using, it can either feel extremely low or extremely high. Um, and I feel like that's just something that many other mice do not give us. Um, now I'm going to talk about the cable. This really annoyed me. Um, it's a shitty rubber cable, and it's only four feet long. So I literally can't get it in my bungee. Um, I, well, I could if I unplugged my Viper 8K Hertz, but I'm just not, it's just really not worth that to me. And I did just remember that there are actually two more of these mice. And if you guys seem to enjoy this video, I'll definitely release a, a part two or part three. Who knows? Um, but I will review these mice. But this is the Wired Edition. It's coming in at $10. Um, however, you can get a 30 pack for $185. Um, so if you want to have like a ton of mice, if you're afraid the quality is going to go to shit, I guess that's a solid option. Um, the build of this mouse does seem to be very good. And let's weigh it. I th I honestly have not weighed it yet. It is pretty nimble, though. It is a pretty nimble mouse. Um, so let's see. Guessing 65. What is that? 61, 4 grams off? I'm literally a fucking messiah. Um, but yeah, this mouse is pretty lightweight. Um, think about it. This mouse has been out for a few years now, and not many mice are at that 60 gram weight. And I find that so hard to believe. Um, like, there's just no way that this is the same weight as the G Pro Super Light. The Super Light feels much lighter in hand, but um, obviously the scale is not lying to me, or at least I think it isn't. And the balancing obviously isn't as good as the super light, but it's kind of surprising that Amazon's out here with a ten dollar fucking sixty gram mouse. Uh, now, I'm, but one of the reasons it is so light is because of the size. This mouse is tiny, tiny as hell. Um, it is kind of like a diamond shape. So for anybody who's looking for a G three or three competitor, I think this is your best option. Um, it's extremely affordable. However, one thing to note is that these sides are so fucking narrow. Um, my thumb is just like bigger than it. And my hands 22 by 11 i'm forced into like this insane aggressive claw and you know i could just imagine like using this mouse at a school library and just fucking like aggro clawing it that would look so awkward um i tried to fingertip it and all i feel is um these like ridges and it's just not the move it really hasn't been enjoyable whatsoever and the shape is just extremely awkward and pretty much unusable if you don't do claw i mean if you redacted grip uh for my hand it is just a bit too small of a mouse maybe if you have like 
10 CM hands it would work. Um, but like I said, extremely tiny mouse, but it is $10 and 60 grams. And if you look at it like that, it's a lot better than it is in reality. This scroll wheel, it feels like the Cox CM600. It's like rubberized, um, but it just doesn't feel good. Um, there are like defined steps though. So, I mean, that's just awesome. Uh, but the sensor can give you a light show. So that's pretty cool. Um, and that's going to be all for this review. Sadly, this mouse will not be receiving the seal of approval. That may come as a shocker to some of you, um, especially because the mouse foot feet design does somewhat resemble a smiley face, um, but it, it is a stretch for sure. Um, but yeah, this mouse is just absolutely terrible. Actually worse than the Booga mouse. And using this mouse led me to have a newfound respect for the Booga Mouse because at least the Booga Mouse had 500 hertz pulling rate. I am getting a whopping, it seems like 125 uh, on the Amazon Basics mouse. So if you get this mouse for gaming, uh, you made a very good choice and make sure to leave a like and sub. I will leave some gameplay.